Hello and welcome to another Flux tutorial. My name is Nico and today I'll be showing you how to customize or modify existing components in Flux. A good example is when you need to reposition or hide the silk screen objects from components you drag from the library or for footprints you imported from other tools. You can also do more advanced customizations as well, like directly modifying paths in footprints or sub layouts. So open up your Flux app and let's see how we can do this. Let's start with a simple example. Let's try to modify the silk screen element that's part of this C5 component. If I hover over the component, I will be able to select the whole component, not the silk screen. To select an element within a component, you have a few options. The simplest one is just to double click and select the element. You can also find the element in the objects tree, or when you hover, if you hold the command key, you'll be able to select the element. As soon as we select an element, and let's, for example, drag it around, we can see that Flux automatically generates a rule. This is basically a position rule, but it has an interesting flag at the end. Is the exclamation mark important flag? This flag is what allows us to modify elements that are within a component. If I all of a sudden delete this important flag, the component will automatically go back into its place. The only way to modify an element that is within a component is to use the important flag. And the same rule applies for other elements within components, for example, paths. You can basically do the same thing by dragging around a path. Now, if we also want to hide the silicon element, the simplest way is to move it around, and as soon as we have the rule being created, we can add an enable rule. and set it to false. To force the element to be hidden, we need to add the important rule. Let's now say, for example, that we want to hide all the value elements of every component in our design. Now, doing that one by one is not really time effective. A much better way is to modify them in bulk. When taking a look at the objects tree, we can see that all those elements have the word value in their designator. So, we can construct a rule that targets all those values. This rule that we have here matches every element that contains the word value in the designator. In this case, we can see that we have selected 26 elements. Those are all the value silk screen elements in our design. Now to hide them, we do something similar to what we did in the previous example. We find the enable rule, we set it to false, and then we need to add the important flag. You can see that all the value elements have been hidden. Now let's do a little bit more complex example. So what happens if we want to hide the silk screen values, but only of the resistors in our design? To do that, we first need to match all the resistors and then the value silk screen elements within those resistors. In the selector here, what we can do is first match every resistor in our design by adding this syntax, which basically looks for all the part types in our design that matches the resistor name and then from all those match resistors, it looks for the selection element that has value in the designator. Now, if we enable the rule back, we can see that only the value elements for the resistors have been hidden, but not, for example, this one from this capacitor 4. As we mentioned in the introduction, this same process can be applied not only to silicon elements, but also to paths, or really every other element in the design. So let's see how to modify a property of one of these paths here. When we click on the rule that was generated by Flux, we can see that Flux basically matches the UID of that element and then creates a position rule with the important flag to move the path to the new position. Now, let's say that we want to modify the path size of this path in C5. We can emulate what Flux did with the position rule, but with the path size rule. Now, here's the easiest process that we can follow. We select the path that we want to modify, we copy the object ID, now we come to this other rule that has, now we come to this rule that has been generated by Flux. We duplicate it. Now let's change the name to for C5. And let's change the UID of the element that we want to modify. In this case, pasting the element of the path that we selected. Now let's delete this rule to move the path back to the original position. And let's add another rule with this case is the size rule to, for example, two millimeters. Remember that since this element is part of another component, 
we need to add the important rule, otherwise the element won't be modified. The same process can be applied to modify any other property of the pad, like the shape, solder mask, solder mask opening, or any other property. Sub layouts work in a very similar way, so let's find a sub layout to run an example. In this case, we're going to use a USB-C. Going to the PCB editor, we can see that if we select the sub layout and we move it, we're going to be moving the whole block. To move individual elements, we need to do something similar to when we selected elements within a component. You can double click or hold the command key. A good example is if you want to modify this pad and make it a through hole pad instead. To do that, as always, we're going to create a new rule set and then try to match for the ID of the element. If we want to get the element of the ID, we need to select that particular element and go to the object ID and copy it. Now we paste that UID in our selector base rule and we now have this element selected. Now we add the pad type rule and we modify that type and make it a standard. Remember, you need to add the important rule, otherwise the element will not be modified. In this case, since the pad is too small, we also need to modify the size. And there you have it. We now have learned how to modify C screen elements, pad, and basically every element that comes within a component in Flux. Hope this has been helpful. Bye.